have you back with us. Let's proceed on to a favorite segment of many, many in the Washington metro area, and that is called Prashanti. A true believer of Sai, Sai the Guru, Mrs. Nalini Bhatt. She will quite graciously present her Guru's message on our show for this week. I offer my humblest pranams at the most sacred lotus feet of Bhagawan Sri Satya Sai Baba. Welcome to Prashanti, this is Nalini. In the previous episodes, we saw how Baba was blossoming in into a most delightful child. In today's Prashanti, we'll bring you information on Karanam Subamma, who was like a foster mother to little Satya. Karanam Subamma was the first wife of the village accountant, also called Karanam. Karanam was the name given to the accountant of the village. Subamma did not have any children. So, the Karanam had remarried, but even the second wife did not bear any child. Subama was extremely fond of little Satya, especially since she had no children. Little Satya, even when he was two or three years old, had taken an aversion to eating non-vegetarian food. Subama, on the other hand, a Brahmin lady, would cook delicious vegetarian food and always loved to have Satya over and feed him vegetarian food. She was also a friend of Ishwaramas and her house was just two houses away from Satya's house. So Satya spent most of his uh, day at Karam's, Karanam Subama's house. Karanam Subama would always love to gather children and give them uh, food with her own hands. Subama loved Satya as her own child. I have a quote from Baba talking about Subama. Her love for Swami was great. In the Dwapar Yuga, it was Devaki who gave birth to Krishna, but Yashoda had the great good fortune of being called the mother of Krishna. Similarly, Subama had such great good fortune in this age. We are all familiar with the story of little Krishna showing the entire universe in his tiny mouth for his mother when she asked him to open his mouth for Yashoda suspected that little Krishna had eaten mud. A similar incident occurred in Subama's life as well. As we said before, she would love to feed Satya, his favorite pakoda or vada, and on one such occasion, she asked him to open his mouth to give him a drink of water. And when Satya opened his mouth, wonder of wonders, she could see the entire universe in his tiny mouth, complete with heavenly bodies revolving. She was blessed to watch this phenomenon, which threw her into ecstasy for days. We have a short clip regarding this. The clip also contains Subama's um, house, where little Satya spent many, many joyful days as a child, enjoying her adoration and her love. <laughs> Subama that he would be present to give her Tulsi water on her death, on her deathbed. When Subama fell ill, 
Baba was away in Bangalore. Subama in her delirium was constantly talking about Baba showing her uh, visions of Shirdi Sai Baba and also his own Balalila, Sai Krishna's Balalilas. But since Baba was not there, her relatives and friends started wondering, has Baba forgotten his promise given to Subama? Let us uh, see what Baba had to say on this occasion. Having served you for so long, could you not have fulfilled her desire at least? Is this the reward for her loyal service? I told them tersely, she is not dead. Please remain quiet. None could believe my words. I went near the body of Subama and I called her Subama Subama. She opened her eyes slowly and held my hands tightly. She shed tears of joy and gratitude. Everyone witnessing the scene was wonderstruck. Baba put his fingers to her lips. Her mouth opened a little from the fingers of Baba. There poured into her mouth the immortal Ganga and Subama joined the ranks of the released. What a thrilling scene. Subama's soul was waiting for Baba. The door of the cage was open, yet the bird had not flown away. For her soul must feast on the beautiful form of Baba before he released her into eternity. Such was the bond between the mother, foster mother and the son. Unfathomable, unimaginable. Thank you for watching us. Jai Sai Ram.